What is going on today, guys? This is Tony from Team Divine Pro here. Coming at you guys with another deck uh, improving your wish for game video. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, on our beautiful new SEO playmat. I realize that yes, that is beautiful. I know, I love it. Uh, anyways, we're going to be talking about uh, deck compression and memory. So I know I haven't done a lot of these videos recently, but I want to get back to them because I have found new content to think about. And uh, you guys have actually been giving me ideas. It's great the fact that you guys are really supporting this segment. It really shows me that you guys love it that much and you really want to learn more about the game. So um, just keep on sending me topics and I will do them. So anyways, guys, uh, today we're going to be talking about memory and all that type of stuff and deck compression. So let's start off with deck compression and then we'll follow up into memory. So what is deck compression? Deck compression is the ability to pinpoint accurately what you are looking for inside your deck so in all reality it's pretty much the it's pretty much when you are in the refresh stage that you want to get the most specific cards that you need to look for in the deck so what i'm trying to meet, say by that is that like in the later phases of the game when you're about to refresh all your cards like mix them up again and all that from the drop pile the cards you want are the card the cards you want to see the most are the cards that you want to have in the deck which means that you want to have better odds at drawing them so that's that is pretty much deck compression in a little set, like summary right there so say you want so most of the time when i'm refreshing it's near the end of the game so i want to see more of those grade 3s grade 2s and grade 1s and not those grade zeros and i want to see for sure those climaxes because this is where they come in clutch and where they could actually save you your life, like save your life, like pretty much the game for you because of the fact that they do everything. They like, it's like, okay, you're about to attack me. Okay, I have, I only have 30 cards in my deck and I have seven to eight climaxes in the deck. So it's like, oh, I have a one in, I have like a, no, sorry, it's, I have 40 cards in the deck and I have, so it's like, I have a one out of five chance to draw them. So it's like, what? That's not fair, because if I hit you for four, for five, you're probably you're gonna for sure probably get it. So it's like, yeah, that's how the game rolls. And then you have a better odds of drawing the cards that you need. Whereas if you were to have a lot more cards, then the ratios would be mumbled up, and then you would be drawing grade zeros when you wouldn't need them. So that is pretty much deck compression as it is. I will now explain to you guys how most likely to get to like achieve deck compression, and the probably for the most vital and most overall topic is the climaxes to, to take as an example so climaxes you really want to get these cards in the deck and the most of them possible the way to do that is through memory not the memory ability but through your own knowledge of your deck and what have you you've been checking so what i mean by this is the fact that uh, sorry uh is the fact that you got to keep track of your stock and your drop pile and everything here so it's really a Waste is really a game of where you have to keep like knowledge of your your entire board, and if you play out your entire board properly, you will win because of the fact that you will beat your opponent out just based on your knowledge of the game and of your own self, and then perhaps just because that they're not skilled enough to beat you. That's pretty much why you have these videos to watch, because you'll probably be better than your opponent. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, about that memory knowledge thing, if say you check uh, a bunch of them, like say you have a um, okay, so you have to start off with eight climaxes. Let's say you check one into the deck, the stock. You know for sure that there's one there and that there's seven left in the deck, perhaps if you didn't draw any. So future on. Furthermore, if you wanted to make sure that you have those eight climaxes, the best way to do it would be to send to know where they are in your stock. So like say in turn three, it's like I know that I have one at the bottom and then I want to have one at the third, like. If you know that you have around, if this card was the third card, and that there's two more below it, and you're near, you're almost near refresh point, you're like, oh crap, I need to refresh really quickly. It's like, oh okay, then here's what I'm gonna do. You have an Ozuna in hand. You'll summon her. You'll call her. You'll pay the two, get rid of the two whatevers. But then you'll have the ability to get rid of this one because of her effect. So this way, you're guaranteeing that you have your climax in the deck for the next refresh which is great just absolutely great and 
that is how you would deck compress even further into your deck because of the fact that you know exactly where your cards are and how many climaxes. Because say if you have like four in the, the 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 drop here, and then you have three up here. I mean three, like you have three here in your stock, and then you have two in your hand. That Lee, wait, that's did I just say four, three, and two? That's nine. Okay, whoa, whoa okay. You have three here, three here, and one there. One in your hand. You know that there's still at least one left, and that obviously either means it's in a marker, as a card marker, or it's in your deck. So what you want to do would probably be to get to that, either to get to that climax, or you take the risk and you just get rid of all the stock so that you can, well not all your stock, but you get rid of a, a large majority of your stock so you know that you have those in your deck. Which is why I really like the Guilty Crown deck, because of the fact that there's the girl with glasses, uh, I don't feel like, I don't know if I have my deck with me. I can get it. I'm prepared for this video, Tony. Uh. Yeah, okay, perfect. So there's this girl with glasses, uh, yeah, okay. So her ability is that if you get a check a climax, you get to send it, you get to send the top card and give two thousand. So it's a power booster, and you get to make sure that you have this climax next mulligan, which is really great because of the fact that it is further it helps your deck compression. So you have more odds of you you have more climaxes two cards that you have in your deck, which is perfect because that's what, exactly what you want because you deck compression is all about getting to those key cards that you really want in the deck. So. Um, I guess I'll segue into the next part, which is memory, which is another thing I wanted to talk about. So memory is the ability to send cards if you were, say, like, if you play Yu-Gi-Oh! or, say, Cardfight Vanguard. For Cardfight Vanguard, Lawkeeper has that ability to set, like, send all the rearguards out of the game. And for Yu-Gi-Oh! Banishing Monsters is the exact same effect. So it's kind of like sending it up here. So that card's out of play for now. And the ability, uh, I don't have the Puella deck on me, but... Um, I know for a fact that the Puella, if you use the Climax combo, it goes into memory, but then the new one gets power, which is really powerful. And usually, most of the time, whatever clan like deck that has memory usually plays it just because of the fact that it further increases uh, deck compression and gives power, which is really powerful. So I would highly suggest playing memory if you can in your deck if it coincides with everything that you're trying to run. So anyways, uh, memory is just a way of getting rid of cards. So say you don't, you're like, it's like, oh, okay, after I use the Climax combo, I won't need this card anymore. So I'll get it, put it into memory so that I can further enhance the fact that I'm going to draw more of the certain cards I need, like the threes and twos. Whereas if I had still had this card in hand deck, I could have possibly not gotten a cancel because say you mull it again, you shuffle everything in, including this card, then the chances and you say this is the order, you would have checked this card and you might have lost. Whereas if you checked, if you didn't have that card, you would have checked this card right away and you would have canceled, which is great. So that is pretty much in a shell, a nutshell, what memory does because it gives you power and it gives you deck compression ability. So two vital things that are really important. And memory is just in all reality, the spot, every spot on the board is a way for deck compression to happen. And what, I'm at, and what I'm trying to say here is that the spots here, you can further go in because you can put three levels, so three colors, and usually I like to go with grade zeros because that's the most beneficial way to take advantage of these three empty spaces. Because this is just room, guys. This is just room to take up, and this is room as well. If you know that you're going to mulligan refresh soon, then the best thing to do is to send, well actually, the beginning, the best thing to do is always to pick a level zero. No matter what, go for that level zero or the card that you for sure will not need in the end. Level threes and level twos I would highly avoid putting in here because you really need them in your deck near the end game, in the late game, and everything. And so I would highly put it, so then you reduce your deck to at least 47 cards guaranteed for the next refresh when you're at well, yeah, it's three, you know. So if you're like two, then it's a 48. But you know, you get the map. You get the map, okay? Yeah. So anyways, and then you have this part right here, this section right here, the clocking. So if you know, this is really, you have to be really uh, skilled at this game. Like, 
pretty smart and like tactical in a way that if you know that you're going to refresh soon, you, but you want to keep a certain card, but you still want to draw and refresh really quickly so that you don't have as many cards in this draw pile because say you have like five cards left or like two card, like three cards and you're like, oh, okay, I already have seven climaxes, but I don't want to wait that one extra turn to drop more stuff to, sorry, you only have two cards and you, but you don't want to drop more stuff into this, the drop pile later on, then the best way to do it is to put something that you really want, like you want to keep Sorry, you want to keep out of the, the refresh pile. So, like, say I don't need this level zero anymore. I'll clock it. So then I'll draw the two cards. I might get two good gray, gray cards. And the fact is that now all the good cards are being re mulliganed back into the deck. But this card that I don't need is being kept here. And then when it does go set, be sent into the draw pile, I probably won't ever see it again because usually you don't refresh twice in the game. I will personally, I, I don't. And besides, if it does come up, you probably, odds are that the deck compression is going to be even smaller because the deck ratio keeps on shrinking and shrinking, which is great. So you got to take advantage of the clock here. you got to be really smart, and if it's like, oh, okay, like, I understand that green sometimes, like, for Fate Zero, that you can play certain cards here, and, like, Guilty Crown has that ability, you can switch cards. But, like, say if you're just playing basic decks like this, the best way would be to keep, if you're going to know that you're going to refresh soon, you put this here. You draw, and then this way it prohibits you from at least draw, seeing this card in the next refresh. It also sets you up so that you have a target, if you don't have this color already, for your level, so that you get rid of it for sure. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I would want to talk about, just because of the fact that deck compression is so... Like, I feel like it's a really simple concept, but people don't get it like great. The fact is you guys have to play really smart about manipulating and keeping track of your cards because if you keep track of your cards and you know where the the climax com the climaxes are and you try to get to them it's great because of the fact that you know exactly where they are so that it's like say it's like oh okay i only have five but i i know i i have the ability in my hand to apply pressure to my opponent and get to that seventh one then you go for that because most of the time that that's what i would do because you want to get that seventh one in before you compress. And that's exactly why sometimes I play the Brainstormers. That's it early on because of the fact that it's like, oh, I know that there's one left in the deck. Because most of the time, if I'm keeping track, I'll know that's like, oh, there's a, there's two of them in the deck and there's like around 15 cards. So my odds are, in, are like two, like one in seven almost. So that's great. Basic math, I guess, because, um, you know, it's one in seven. So I could be like, Oh, okay, so I'll flip this, and most if I don't get a climax, then I've at least brought, I at least know that now I've reduced it by four cards, so then there's 11 left, and then that means that I have two in 11 chance of getting a card, so that's practically one in five, again, of getting a climax, and then that means that next turn, if this survives, I can go again, and, well, actually, I don't remember if the ability is, yeah, 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 I can go again, I can go again, and then do it again, and I and most likely get tw two of them, and then that way, I know for a fact that I don't have any more climaxes, and I can go on to the next one. And even though it doesn't add more cards to your deck, it does quicken the things up. So it does reduce the fact that maybe it's like, oh, I don't want to wait up on another turn to push everything out, and you still have a bunch of cards in your deck. It's like, okay, brainstorm it, get rid of, put four cards in, and perhaps they're really good cards, and then you get a mulligan where you could have, where you still have like maybe say 40 cards where it, as if you waited a turn, you might have lost guys, and then you would have been at like 45 cards, which is a lot better because the climaxes will appear more often. It's just ratios of how you think that the percentage of what you will see. So, um, good uh, big tips to pull away from this, guys, would be to manipulate your levels, take advantage of your clock, play smart tactically, and always keep track of your cards, and don't be afraid to push hard early on before the moles and also to not get rid of those threes or twos anywhere and always try to find them put them in the stockpile i mean draw pile if you can level zeros and level ones you can maybe do without the level ones if you play a lot of them then yeah you got to play them but apart from that guys later on in the game if you're already set up and you don't need the level zeros anymore try not to get them in so if you have a bunch of them in your hand hold on to them in your hand and then if you can, because if you don't have a full field, then don't do that and just play aggro and play the level zeros. But if you can, do it. 
that way you will be able to uh, compress even further if you are refreshing early. If you're not refreshing early, then just feel free to call them and all that. And one more thing, guys, before I sign off, um, there's an advantageous way to take advantage of your opponent because of the fact that if they, if you leave a spot open, they attack you for two. The odds are of you getting of a climax are much greater than if they like um, if they attack just for one because you have a character, which is great. And also the fact is that, like I mean, sorry, like if they have an open space and everything, the fact also is that they would. This is pushing them. Say like you have four cards left, you're pushing them to force you into a refresh, which I know it is kind of bad late game, but like it's also kind of good because then it also guarantees that say you know that there's no more climaxes or good cards. Like it'll force a climax out if it does, and then it'll be sent to the refresh bef before uh, refresh is triggered which is great because then you know, at least know that you have another Climax in the deck and it also allows you to see, to get rid of cards like, it's like, okay, I don't, I haven't been able to get rid of them but hopefully he'll be able to get rid of by attacking me and this forces your opponent to think about if they want to really apply that much pressure on you because it's like, oh, if I do this then maybe he'll be, he'll refresh obviously and it's like, oh, he might go, get into his better cards if I do this. So, in both ways, Sometimes leaving your field open is kind of good, but I wouldn't suggest it all the time because I've done it before, and if you don't play at the right time, you might lose. So, um, yeah, apart from that, guys, memory is a great way. You manipulate your board, use everything to your advantage, and play smart, guys. Keep Knowledge is pretty much key in this game, and if you know everything like about what's happening on your board, you can manipulate it so that you can probably win against your opponent as long as you play your game there's really nothing else that you can ask for. Anyways, guys, this has been Tony from Team Divine Pro. Um, comment, like, subscribe on this video. Uh, tell me how the video quality was because I really want to know if I should go back to the previous camera, which I feel like you guys are probably going to respond to that and say yes. Now, anyways, guys, this has been Tony from Team Divine Pro. Signing off.